But let's move right on and connect with a corporate voice. The management of Mercator joining in to talk about the road ahead for the dredging business post the demerger, the field development plan and oil production target as well as the update on the Indonesian coal mine and operational profitability outlook. Shala Mittal is the CEO of Mercator now with us on the show. Good morning and thanks for joining in on ET Now. To begin with, Mr. Mittal, let's talk about the demerger of the dredging business. The board has given the nod, but post all the approvals, when do you expect it to be completed and relisted? And can you also give us some insight as to what could be the share allotment ratio for existing investors? Hi, good morning, Gab. Uh, so dredging business, uh, strategically, we, we decided to split, as, as you've read, the board has approved it. And the reason behind it is that we feel uh, it's a business which requires uh, capital for growth, and the growth prospect for the business are tremendous. Given the, given the push by the current government on the marine infrastructure, both uh, inland waterways and the ports. Uh, so owing to which we feel uh, uh, it's best to have a separate company uh, with a clear focus, clear management team, as well as a clear vehicle we, we, you know, we can uh, capitalize the company enough for the, for the prospective growth of the, of the business. In terms of timelines, uh, we're looking at, uh, I think, six to eight months. Uh, it's a process uh, where you know, I think all the approvals are required, the SEBI approvals and the, the court process. So post which, I think six to eight months is, seems like a realistic timeline for that. So what's the debt on the books right now and how much of it will go to the dredging arm? So uh, the debt, overall debt uh, on, on Mercator's book, long term debt is about 16, about 1600 crores. Uh, and uh, the, you know, the respective debts will follow with the business. So right now the dredging business has about uh, 300, uh, uh, about 300 crores of debt, which will go with the dredging business uh, when it is split. Ashala, morning. Uh, to become a larger player in dredging, reports have said that you're keenly eyeing Dredging Corporation of India as well. What's the latest on that? Uh, as the government is mulling entire divestment of its stake, but its employees have offered to buy back a sizable chunk too. Look, I mean, we, we are the second largest player in, in the dredging business in India. Of course, the market growth opportunities are tremendous. So we, we look at all options when we when you look at uh, you know growth options for our business for our company, uh, DCI suddenly uh, gives out a, a, a exciting opportunity. Of course, we have to see the pricing and how how uh, valuable and strategically can fit into our business. And I think closer to the time when the final decision is made, we can definitely look at it. Uh, of course, I think there are uh, uh, you know the, the, the as you said the employees are trying to buy back the company. I think that's the process when the government clarifies, we will look at it uh, uh, more clearly and more uh, keenly and exactly how to look at it. Being that you're an interested party, right? I mean, we, we look at all opportunities, of course. I mean, you know, that's, as I said, it, it does offer an exciting opportunity for us to look at expansion uh, inorganically. Uh, so when the final cut is made, when I think, uh, you know, when the government do decide, we'll take a look at it for sure. How diplomatically you put that one. But tell me, what's the road ahead then for your dredging business when it becomes a separate entity with or without dredging corp? Uh, what's the scale up plan over the next three to four years? See, as I said, the dredging uh, business uh, offers a very exciting landscape. Uh, you know, I think it just at the at the fulcrum where uh, you know the business is looking, the market is looking to expand dramatically. Now, for example, the kind of projects uh, government of India undertaking, the Ganga projects. So there are several tenders expected for inland waterways. Uh, you know, making Ganga more navigable, and these are large projects. These are inland waterway projects. And that is just Ganga. There are other projects in other parts of India, the rivers. Then there are lakes, there are dams, uh, you know, the river connection, connectivity. All, that, all this requires dredging. Uh, government is also focusing on uh, enhancing the ports, uh, the major ports, uh, minor ports. Uh, so the existing ports uh, plan to increase the depths, which again requires dredging and, you know, maintenance continues thereafter. 
uh, recently government around the uh, Titi Karim project where it's about 900 crores kind of project. Uh, again, you know, large part of it is uh, dredging. So I think the landscape for dredging, the business environment is very, very buoyant. And we are, you know, beautifully placed for that. As I said, we are, we are one of the largest players in India. Uh, so both in terms of existing business, which is the ports, uh, as well as the inland waterways and the inland water bodies, ex offer an exciting uh, uh, growth plans for us. And that is exactly why we wanted to split the company. So there is a clear focus and be able to, you know, prepare the company for this expansion, which, is, which, which will come over the next few years. Now, you've also secured the DGH approval for the field development plan of two oil discoveries. Can you tell us what are the recoverable reserves here and by when will you commence the commercial drilling and revenue potential? What is it that you see, FY19 onwards from the same? Yeah, so oil is the, you know, it's an exciting uh, time for us. We, we've invested in the business for the last few years in terms of uh, drilling and exploration. Uh, now it's time that it's going to be, you know, commercially produ into production soon. So field development uh, plan is uh, approval by the government where which uh, finally sanctions a production plan for the field. So uh, th this field, we are only talking about the two, two oil wells right now. Uh, there are more, more oil wells we're drilling. So for the two oil wells uh, which you've got the field development plan approved by the government, has about uh, 23 million barrels of oil uh, as approved by the plan, while the external parties, uh, uh, you know, stack the the reserves, the uh, exportable reserves, a much higher number. Um, so we will commence the trial production soon, and the commercial production uh, uh, in in all likelihood by the middle of this year. Uh, so the, the these two oil wells have the capacity to go up to the capacity of 6,000 barrels a day in terms of uh, production. Which of course will take uh, a bit, you know, it'll, it'll be a slow ramp up to the the full capacity, but 6,000 barrels a day is uh, uh, it's a very exciting production level uh, for for these oil blocks, and considering these are onshore blocks, the cost of production is very very low. So this uh, the oil business, the oil production business will uh, will be a massive uh, addition to to the companies, the groups, uh, uh, top line and bottom line in times to come. Uh, we are still. Uh, 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 drilling a few more wells uh, and you know that the results of which will come in the few months so the the reserves level uh, may actually go up uh, depending on the results of these wells as well Great, Shala, we'll let you go on that note thanks very much for joining in although you haven't divulged too many details in terms of your Overall aggressive CapEx plans, you've gotten a very clear picture as to how things are looking for the company as well as the growth outlook going forward. Wishing you all the very best.